You've probably come across a text effect like this. You're on a website and then there is this text where one of the words keeps scrolling or changing to the other words. How do they achieve this? I've always been curious and I played around and I was able to find a solution. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that in this video. So we're going to be starting out with this. I have the style block here. I'll come back to the style in a second, but look at the HTML part here. So in my H1, I have the only database system with high. Then I have this div with a class of benefits. Then I have like five benefits. And once you notice here is that the first benefit is the same thing as the last benefit. I'll show you why I'm doing this in a second. Then I have the remaining text and good developer experience. So everything appears like this, but what I want is for only one text to appear at the time instead of the five texts appearing at the same time. But let's look a bit at the style. So for the span, I do this background gradient on each of the texts. Well, my gradient is just light pink and dark pink, but you can play around with other gradients. These key frames here, which I'm going to come to in a second. For the H1, I have this style here, the width, the padding, the margin. I have this font size where I use clamp so that I have two rem as the minimum and three rem as the maximum. I have a video on clamp. Clamp allows you to create responsive typography without any media queries. I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to check out my video on clamp. Then I have center and my font family. Okay, now that I have all of this, the first thing I want to do with this benefit is let's just give it a border of one pixel solid white so that we can see how that block changes. Now one I'm going to do is I'm going to give this benefit a height of 1 em. So a height of 1 em is going to be based on the font size of this div. Now if we come to this div here, because this div is a child of this H1, that means this div can inherit the font size of the H1. And for our H1, we have this font size here. So when I say 1 em, it means that the height of the benefit is going to be 1 em of the H1 font size. So if I refresh now, you can see that the section now has one EM, which is the font size. Now that I have that, I can do overflow hidden. And when I do this, the remaining benefits are no longer showing. Okay, now we have this. Now another thing I'm going to do now is a display of flex. And then I'm going to have flex direction column so that the items are aligned on the column. And the reason why I'm doing this is if I should remove this overflow hidden, you see we have the same thing. But if I remove this display of flex and flex direction of column, what you notice is that sometimes two of the benefits can be on the same line. As you can see, this benefit and this benefit are on the same line. So by doing flex and direction of column, we ensure that everything is always aligned on the column and no two benefits can be on the same line. Okay, now I can put my overflow hidden again. Now, one more thing I want to do is that I don't want this whole benefit to take up one line. In our case, because I have this display of flex, that means this is going to take the whole of the space available. Now that may be what you want and I'll actually show you later in this video how to work with that. But another thing I can use here is inline flex. So it will cause this element to be in line even as it is still a flex container. And now if I should refresh, you can see now that the AND goes to that line. So if there isn't a lot of space, the AND would come down. But if there is more space, the AND will come up. You can even see at this point and good also joins it on that line. Let's do our animation. Now, what we are going to do is that for each of this span, we're going to make them move to the top. So scalability moves to the top and then performance would show, performance moves to the top, flexibility would show, flexibility moves to the top and so on until we get to the end. So for this span, actually, I don't even need this section here since I already have this span here. So for this span, I can say animation. And for my animation, I'm going to call this auto scroll. And I want this to last for let's start with 10 seconds. And I want this to happen infinitely as is, it should never stop. Now for my auto scroll, this is my keyframes here. I already prepared these keyframes before this video because it was kind of tricky getting the values right. But let's go through the keyframes. So what I'm saying here is that at 0% on the Y axis, we want a translate of zero. At 5%, we want the translate to still stay at zero. So between 0% and 5%, it would give the user enough time to 
read what is there. Then from 5% to 10%, we want the translate on the y axis to be minus 1 em. You can see again we're using em. And the reason why we're doing this is so that it can work with the font size. If we use pixels, for example, when the font size becomes smaller, then our animations will not be smooth. But by using em, we are always paying attention to the font size of the element. So from 10% to 30%, we keep it as minus 1 em. Then at 35%, we go minus 2 em. And that is how we do it until we get to the end 100% translate minus 4 em. Now, at the time where we do translate minus 4 em, this is going to translate to the last item. So by the time it translates to the last item, we're going to have scalability. And because we have infinite, what's going to happen is that the keyframe, after it gets to this point, will go back and start from 0%. And that is why I have scalability here and I have scalability here. So that by the time we get to the end, you would not notice any transition between the end and the beginning. But let's just see all of that in action anyway. So if I should refresh now, you see after certain keyframes, the items keep going to the top. It gets to scalability, that's the end, then it, go past, then, then it goes back to the beginning and you can see it continues again and it continues again and it gets to scalability, it goes back to beginning, you don't notice it, then it continues again. Now let's say I made this item something else. Now watch what is going to happen. We have scalability, performance, flexibility, optimization, something else. Now watch. You see the way it changed to scalability before it went to the next one. So that is why I have scalability at the top and scalability at the bottom so that you do not notice the transition between the end of the animation and the beginning of the animation. Now all these keyframes that I'm using here, you can use your own keyframes if you want a text to stay longer or if you want your animation to last longer than 15 seconds. Or in our case, we have 10 seconds. Maybe you want it to last 20 seconds. You can, of course, play around the values. I just wanted to give you an idea of what things look like. So with 15 seconds, it looks much better. People can read. And if they wait long enough, they can keep reading. <laughs> now, one thing I want to do is to remove my border. I don't like my border. And then another thing I want you to notice is that you can see how the text is breaking into the Y. I don't know if you notice it. Look at the flexibility. It kind of, it's kind of on top of the Y. And so what I'm going to do here is first I'll give this benefit a position of relative. Then I can give this a Z index of minus one. So that way the text would be at the back. Okay, you can see now it is animating at the back of the text above instead of on top of the text above. Now this is one way you can do it where you have your text here along with other text. But another thing you can do is instead of using inline flex, you can instead have your normal flex and maybe we can make this font size. Let's do a calculation where we do 1m plus 5 pixels. So we can add the current font size with 5 pixels. Now if we do this, well, let's even make this bigger with 10 pixels. So now if we do this, you have something like this where it is on one line. It is no longer inline flex, it is a normal flex. Again, this might be what you want. Maybe it looks nicer. So now if we should reduce the screen which would reduce the font size you see our animation still works fine if we should increase the screen our animation still works fine if i should change this clamp here from 3 rem to 6 rem which is going to be very big and let's say i increase the max width of the h1 yeah to something like this so you can see this is very big but because we're using em instead of pixels all our animations are going to be relative to the font size so that's why i use em instead of using pixels so whether everything is big or everything is small let me even make this smaller by saying one rem even if everything is as small as this you can see our animation still looks very smooth because we used em for the height we used em for our translate y so when the font size is big or it is small all our animations are still smooth if i were to remove the overflow heading just to show you what exactly is happening you can see what's happening is that all the spans are going to the top so this whole keyframes here is for all the spans so all of them are going to the top and you only get to see one of them at the time in this section here but let me go back and put my overflow hidden and if i should refresh now what you get is this i actually kind of prefer this to the inline flex example that we had i don't know what you think but let me know if you enjoyed this demo and give it a like if you enjoyed it i would also appreciate if you share it and of course subscribe so you don't miss out on more css demos like this